and it's going. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Um, I'm very pleased that you can all join me this evening. Um, I'm in New York on Long Island and it is a sweltering evening, very hot and humid ahead of a storm that we're expecting tomorrow. So um, we're trying to stay cool. I hope uh, the world finds you well tonight and everybody is healthy and safe and doing well. So um, welcome. And again, I appreciate everybody being here and what we're going to be discussing um, today is are you a chip guide detective and it's the art of locating items on the chip guide um, so let's get started and first of all let's explain about poker chips and this explanation is for the seasoned professionals collectors on here as well as newbies and this is going to be posted on YouTube so this will be of some help for people who are just getting started in the hobby. Um, poker chips are um, those round things that are used as money in casinos and the chip guide is the authoritative resource for ch poker chips and other casino collectibles. Today, poker chips are issued by many sources. Originally used as money in games of chance, they are now also used for advertising, tourist trinkets. When you go to a tourist area, you'll find them on golf courses and the pro shops. They're used as golf markers, golf ball markers. Uh, they're used as promotional items in many, many places, and they are used for many other um, uh, for many other things as well. So we put all those poker chips, regardless of where they're used, on the chip guide. And sometimes it's easy to find them and sometimes it may be difficult. This webinar will help you to figure out where your chips were used by using the research functions on the chip guide. And what is a chip guide? Uh, the Chip Guide is an online global catalog of poker chips and casino collectibles. The um, website is chipguide.themogh.org. That means Chip Guide, the Museum of Gaming History.org. It was established originally in 2005 by Hall of Fame club member Greg Susan. And today it has over 250,000, that's one quarter million items in over 22,250 different casinos and other things, other places that issued uh, chips. The chip guide is operated by the Museum of Gaming History, which is an educational project, project of the Casino Collectibles Association. So that's our background information. Now let's get into um, finding stuff on the chip guide. And I'm turning my video off because you don't need to look at me. I'd rather you look at um, the screen. So why is it difficult to find some items on the chip guide? Well, first off, the location might be missing. If we look at the chip all the way on the left from the Flamingo Club, it's a beautiful chip, but it doesn't have the location on it. So that makes it difficult if the location is not listed on the chip. Sometimes the name on the chip might be different than the actual casino name. The next chip, the chip that's says, the red chip that says CCC, um, that was actually issued by the Coin Castle Casino in Las Vegas. And there are chips that spell out the entire name, but for whatever reason, they issued this chip with just the initials. So if you're looking for CCC, you won't find it because the actual name of the casino is Coin Castle Casino. And we will figure out how to locate items when that occurs. 
Additionally, the casino name might actually not be a name. It could be a logo or a picture. And if we look at the orange chip, it's got a picture of a Bronco rider on it. Now, the chip guide has no say at all on what people put on the casino, on their chips. People do whatever they want. But it's our job to take what is ever on the chip and make it as easy as possible for collectors to find them on uh, the chip guide. So we will, as we get into our seminar, we will figure out how to locate this chip. Um, and then finally, the casino name might be confusing. The last chip, the blue chip, we can see the letters C, S, and I but we really have no idea what order they might be in or what these letters might stand for. It could be ICS because the I is the tallest and C and the S are smaller and smaller. It could be CSI or you know any combination of those letters. So sometimes even though there are identifying marks on the chip, it still doesn't make it easy to find them. So we will look at all these individual cases and figure out how we locate chips on the chip guide. So one thing that you should know about casino names on the chip guide is that the chip guide administrators are instructed to use the name that is on the chip as the casino name on the chip guide. That's to make it easier. But sometimes the name that's on the chimp is different from the actual casino name. So we came up with a way to allow that to occur um, by creating aliases. An alias is a second name for a casino. And it typically has what's actually written on the chip rather than the actual casino name when they're different. So that allows you to search on either the actual casino name or the what's written on the chip in order to find something on the chip guide. So it gives you another way of locating it. It's a second name for a casino. Now, sometimes like that Bronco Rider chip, there are pictures on the chip, no words. When that's the case, we put the name of the picture, what it is, in parentheses. So if there was a picture of a boat on a chip, on the chip guide, it would appear as boat in parentheses. So that's helpful in finding uh, items on the chip guide when there is no name, just some kind of picture or logo. And also, again, alias was not an original feature of the chip guide. It was something that we added later on. There were probably a lot of casinos that we had on the chip guide prior to uh, alias uh, being introduced. So if you find someplace where there's a missing alias, meaning that there's something on the chip that is different uh, than the actual casino name, if there's a missing alias, let us know. Contact us and we will get that corrected as soon as possible. Okay, so let's put on our detective hats and locate some chips. Remember, if we're detectives, we're looking for clues and then using those clues to identify chips. So, we're going to start off with not actually a, a chip that's hard to search but a chip that's a good example for identifying clues. So here's a beautiful chip, uh, $1 chip. The name of the casino is right on the chip. It's El Cortez Hotel. So if we look at the clues, one clue is the name El Cortez Hotel. The location is also on the chip. The Los, it's, in Los, it's from Las Vegas. Um, the mold is also very, very helpful in locating chips. The mold in this case is what we call the rectangle mold. It's a series of rectangles in a circle around 
the chip. And if you're not familiar with uh, all the different molds, we have a mold guide on the chip guide. So you could pull up that guide, uh, determine what your mold is if you're having problems finding a chip and you're not sure what the mold is. We also have the denomination on the chip, $1. That's helpful. There are inserts on the chip. In this case, it's called a half pie insert. That's when half of the chip is one color and the other half is a different color. So in this case, one half is a uh, gold color and the other half is gray. And then finally, we have a logo. The logo is a conquistador. So that's all the information. So how would we find this chip on the chip guide? Well, this is gonna be easy. We could use the map drill down method for that. And that means that I'm going to pull up the chip guide. I know it's from Las Vegas and Nevada, so I click on Nevada. Uh, I know the name is El Cortez, so I click on E to come down to the E section. And here's the El Cortez uh, Casino in Las Vegas. I click on that. I get a list of all the chips. Um, from that hotel and here is that chip so that was easy that was to warm us up and get us started so here's that chip and here's the chip guide number and the catalog number so um, that was our starter so let's go back to our presentation and let's now do an actual search so here's another chip. This one says treasure chest on it. That's the name. The mold is diamond and squares. We look around the edge, we see a diamond and the square in a circle around the edge of the chip. The color is off white and the denomination is one. So how would we find this chip on the chip guide? Well, we first use the map drill down method. That's not going to work in this case because we don't know what state this is from. So in that case, we have a casino search function and I'm gonna pull up casino search. And if I enter treasure chest as the search fields, it is going to locate all of the casinos that have both treasure and chest in it. And we have five of them. Now remember that that chip had a diamond and square mold, which is called DIASQR. And if I look at the chip molds that were used in each of these treasure chest casinos, only one of them has diamond and squares. The one from the treasure, treasure chest casino in Nevada, in Carson City, Nevada. So I'm gonna click on treasure chest there, and here is our chip. We've located it and we can see all the information about this, the catalog number and so forth. So we've identified our chip as being from Carson City, Nevada. That was an easy one. Let's go, maybe we'll get a more difficult one next time. And Here's something that happens to me. I don't know if it happens to you, but I put my chips in these two and a half by two and a half inch holders. And um, I write the chip guide number on the holder. And if it's from Nevada, I also write the catalog number on it. So I have this chip, but I forgot to indicate what casino it was used on because FAB doesn't mean anything to me. I don't know an FAB casino. So how can I use that information to find the chip on the chip guide? Well, besides casino search, and let's remember N9864, let's remember that. Um, we'll go back to the chip guide. We have a chip search function, and I could either put in the chip guide number or the catalog number, and it will find the chip. So that was N9864. I click on show and there it is. And it says this chip was used in 
the in Harold's Club. And now it occurs to me that FAB stands for Fred A. Beck, who probably leased a game in Harold's Club. So if we just have a chip guide number or a catalog number, we could search the chip guide and find that item as well. And that's using the chip search feature. Okay, another easy one. Let's see if we'll get a little bit harder. And finally, we have one that's going to be a little bit difficult. We have this really nice looking small key mold chip. It's an off-white color. The denomination is one. And it has a logo that kind of looks familiar, but I don't know where it's from. So if I don't have a name to search on, um, how would I find it? Well, we've looked at casino search, we've looked at chip search, and now we have another very useful tool on the chip guide, the chip guide query facility that can help us to locate this chip on the chip guide. So let's go back to the chip guide and start up the chip guide query facility. So remember the mold was small key. So I'm going to select small key. The denomination was $1 and it was off white. And if I just select white, um, it will look for white any place in the color so it'll match on off white as well as white and if i click query i find out that there are 42 chips that uh, meet the criteria of being a small key chip one dollar denomination and white color and if i look through all these 42 chips up oh, here we go here is that chip. And if I click on the chip guide number here, it'll bring up all the information we have about that chip. And now I remember, oh yeah, this chip is used at, uh, or was used at Del Webb Sahara Reno. That's now a closed casino. So even if we don't have a name, we have a, just a picture or logo, we could use clues on the chip, the information on the chip to identify it using chip guide query. So let's go back to the home page. Let's go back and see what our next challenge is. So our next challenge is a chip that has the initials AHP on it. It's a green $1 chip and it's a Hatton Kane small cane version, SCV stands for small cane version uh, chip. And I think there's probably a couple of different ways that we can locate this chip. Since it's got the initials on it, um, we could use casino search, but I think we could also use the query facility. Let's try both of them and see which one's easier. So let's go back to the chip guide and let's go to casino search and let's put in AHP and I get no hits. How could that be? Well, one of the features of our search engine that we use is uh, um, if we're looking for a word, it has to be four letters or more. If it's less than four letters, like three letters, like AHB, um, you have to look for the occurrence of AHP anywhere in the casino name by putting an at symbol in front of the AHP. And it's identified over here that you need to do that. So if we do at AHP, and whoops, it's the wrong key, sorry about that. At AHP and hit search. Now we get some hits, and the first hit is AHP Aladdin Hotel Poker. And it's got Hatton Kane short, short Kane version. The other names, AHP was someplace in the name over here. So that's not what we're looking for. So if I click on that, Aladdin Home Poker, 
and I page down, we find the chip. Um, so AHP standards stands for Aladdin Home Poker, and it was used at the Aladdin Hotel. But let's see what would have happened if I used the chip guide query facility instead. So I'm looking for Hatton Cane Small Cane Mold. And here it is in the pull down list. The color was green. The denomination is one. And I hit query. Turns out I have 46 of them. And if I look through all 46, I find the chip down here. And here's, here's a little hint. The default sort when you do this is by state. If you change it to casino when you're searching for something, things will be in alphabetic order. So here's AHP right at the front of the list now when I sort by casino instead of by state. So that's how we're able to find this AHP chip from Aladdin Home Poker. And by the way, I got my example of this chip, which is a pretty nice chip, uh, out of a dealer's um, junk box because they didn't know what an AHP stood for. They didn't think it was a Nevada chip and didn't think it had any value. So I got my AHP Aladdin chip for a, a buck or two. Um, and if that dealer had used the chip guide like we have, they'd know we'd have a more valuable chip. So that's a, one of the good features of uh, being able to find stuff on the chip guide. You might have more information than others do. All right, let's go back to uh, the presentation and see what our next challenge is. So this is a little bit harder. We have a red chip, it's $1. It's a small key mold again, and its logo is an S inside of a wreath. So I think the easy way to find this would be to search, use chip guide query to search on small key and red in $1. But let's also search on the name because what if this was a very popular mold and there were a thousand red one dollar hadn't gained molds? That would be too much to search for. So remember, if there's a picture like this wreath, um, we, we note that in the casino name or an alias. So we could search on it. So let's go to the chip guide. Let's bring up casino search. And let's search on wreath. Now, wreath is more than th three letters, so we don't need to put that at in front of it. And when we search on wreath, we'll see, well, yeah, there are a lot of wreaths. A in wreath, B in wreath, B, K in wreath. And if we go down the list, there's an S in wreath in Oregon from Newports. But that's a square and circle mode. That's not a small key mode. But there's another S in wreath mode, and it's from San Juan, Puerto Rico, and they do have a small key mold chip. So if we click on that, voila, here is that chip. So it was used in the Sheraton Hotel in Puerto Rico. And by the way, this is one of my favorite chips. That's why it's in the presentation. So we were able to locate the chip by using the picture that's on the chip. And let's see if we could have found it the other way as well. Let's go to the chip guide query facility. And let's again, look for small key mold and red and $1 and hit query. And I should have changed that to sort by casino. And how many did we get? 47, almost a whole page of them. But as we go down, here we go. Here's that chip. And if we click on the chip guide number, 
it tells us it was used at the Sheridan Hotel. So there are more than one way and, you know, um, sometimes one way won't be successful uh, because you might get too many hits to go through and then try the other way. So let's go back um, to the presentation. Oh, and by the way, I should have told you that we will be making an announcement, something new, um, at the end of the presentation. So it's worth your while to stick um, stick with us until the end because you'll be hearing something that nobody else knows yet. You'll be one of the first ones to know. So here's our ne next challenge. This time we have uh, a red $5 chip. So what are the clues? The clues are it's a horseshoe mold chip. The color is red. It's got three yellow inserts, or those might be mustard instead of yellow, which uh, mustard is a dark yellow. Um, the denomination is $5, and the $5 is inside a star. So I think we can also look both ways, Chip Guy Query Facility as well as Name Search, to locate this chip. Let's go back to the chip guide. Let's go to casino search and let's see what happens if we enter star. Oh, we get a lot. So I don't know how helpful that's going to be. But the star was a picture. So pictures are in parentheses and that is in the beginning. So all these are star, 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 star with dots. Oh, wait a second. Here's one that says star denomination in. And look at that. It's a horseshoe mode. So I think this is it. And if we go down, here is that chip. So we were able to use the information on the chip, the star, and do a name search to find it. Let's see what it would have happened if we did a query on that. So the mold is horseshoe mold. Here we go. The color is red. The nomination is $5. And I'll remember to sort by casino. So it'll be in the front. And we only got 17 of them. And here we go. Here is that chip. And if we click on the chip guide number, it brings up all the information about that chip. It was used at the Star Broiler Casino. All right. So even though we've had a couple of difficult ones, um, we are able to find them. Let's move down to the next one. Yeah, this looks like it's going to be a little bit tougher. So we have a hub mold chip. It's one dollar. It's got a picture of a bird on it and the color looks like purple or lavender. So let's try searching on bird first and see what happens. We'll come to the chip guide. We'll do casino search, put in bird, and we have in the beginning a few birds, a bird work, walking, a bird with goggles. Maybe I can make this a little bit bigger so you can see it. Just a bird, but no, oh, well, here's a hub mold, but it's bird with goggles, so that's no good. Bird harp. Here's a flying bird with a hub mold, so we found it. But we click on it and that's not the chip we wanted. Let's go back to casino search, try bird again, go through the list. And that's it. There are no other pictures of just birds. So we weren't successful. And I think the reason we weren't successful is maybe that's a type of bird and the name is that, you know, like a, um, an owl or an eagle or whatever, whatever kind of bird it is, it just doesn't say bird, it's the type of bird it is. So let's look at the query facility 
and see if that helps us. And again, it was hub mold. It was $1 and the color was lavender, not purple. So we'll query up oh, and look at that. Here's our chip. If we click on it, it's not a bird, it's a goose. It's from the Goose Bay Air Force Base. That's where this chip was used. And the reason we couldn't find it when we searched on bird is that it's actually a goose that we're looking for. All right, so even if we don't have a name, if we just have a picture, that doesn't stop us. All right, and I think this is our last chip that we're gonna go search on. Then we'll have a review and how, what we're going to announce. So here's another attractive chip. It's a crest and seal mold chip. It's red and there's a picture of a man on a horse. So um, we could search for it again both ways, searching on the name and we could search using the uh, chip guide query facility. So let's first search on the name. And the name, it was a man on a horse. So let's search on horse. And if we search on horse and we're looking for crescent seal, there are quite a few crescent seals with horse. And they seem to be in the beginning. There's an Arab horse, it's racing horse or horse standard. And so we have three choices. And if we click on the first one, we get a hit. So even though this is a pretty tough chip to find, um, if you didn't know where to look, using the name search got to it very easily. And if we use chip guide query facility and we looked at crest and seal and color red, And um, let's sort it. There was no denomination on it. Sorted by casino. Hit query. Uh, there are 429, but because we're looking for a picture which sorts before the alphabetic, here is that chip. If we click on it, we found it. We've got the chip guide number, and we know it's a generic chip issued by. Uh, United States playing card company that makes the crescent seal chips and it's an Arab on a horse, not a man on a horse. So we look through all different types of chips um, that didn't have the name of the casino on them and we were pretty, uh, it was pretty easy to find them on the chip guide. So the summary then is if you've just got a catalog number or a chip guide number, then you could use the chips search facility to locate the chips on the chip guide. If you have a name or even a picture or initials, you can search using the casino name search facility. And what you get is a list of casinos that meet uh, the keywords you entered, and um, you will see what molds were used and using those two information. It may take a little bit of time because you might have to check multiple casinos, but you could pretty much find what you need that way. And then finally, if you don't have a name, um, you could use the chip guide query facility. And with the chip guide query facility, Excuse me. With a chip guide query facility, um, you could put in as much, as many clues as you have, the uh, the denomination, the mold, the color, and then you'll get a list of uh, the chips that meet that, so that you could go through those to find out what you're needing. So. Again, there are three different things you can use. 
chip search, casino search, and the chip guide query facility. And between those, you should be able to find what you're looking for. Um, one thing I wanted to show you before we do our reveal is a new feature that's on the chip guide. And that's called chip guide members top tens to 100 list. And what this is, it allows chip guide members. That means if you have a chip guide log on, you could put in your top 10 list of your favorite types of items. So I'm first going to go to my items and um, my favorite chips. So these are my favorite chips. Um, and if you are looking at your list of chips, there will be these down and up arrows that allow you to arrange the chips on the page. So if I like this chip more than I like this chip, I hit the up arrow and it moves it up, it exchange places with the chip that's above it. And if I like it more than this, then I would move it over here and so forth so you could maintain the list. And when you're um, on the chip guide, there is a little button called TT. And if you want to put it on your top 10 list, all you have to do is click on the TT and it goes on your top 10 list. And then you could come here and um, you could come here and manipulate them and put it in the order you want. And it's not just chips. For me, I've got my top 10 chatons. These are my favorite chatons. I've got matchbooks. These are the ones I like. I believe I have uh, postcards as well. I have a nice postcard collection. So you could maintain your top 10 list. And uh, we only have five minutes left in the presentation, so I'm going to bring it to an end. But one of the things we also do is we have a most popular. So what this is, is it calculates all of the, how many times this chip is on the list and in what order it is, and gives it a score. The more lists it's on, the higher it's going to be a list. So these are the most popular items uh, using everybody's lists. So I encourage you to do that, have some fun with that, and now let's do our reveal. So we have some breaking news, and the breaking news is that next week at this time, we are going to have a treasure hunt. Um, I'm going to post images of 20 chips. You will have 24 hours to identify the chip number of each chip, and the one who gets the most correct will win that fantastic chip that's over on the right, the red $1 chip. Um, in case of the tie, the first one to submit will be the winner. So there'll be one winner, uh, whoever gets the most right. And um, if it's a tie, then the first one to get it in. And I will be posting uh, this on the uh, chipboard. And at 9 p.m. next week, I will be um, revealing the 20 chips, and then you'll have 24 hours to get your selections in uh, so that you could win that chip. So each of you having gone through this webinar will be better prepared to find the chips and to, to uh, be in contention as the winner of this. And that will be the end of our uh, webinar tonight. It'll be reposted on YouTube and I thank everybody for joining us. And I did not was not able to see the chat feature because this got complicated. I had too many screens open, but I will answer any of the questions that you had on there um, afterwards. So thanks for joining and I will be closing the webinar and posting it onto um, uh, on YouTube. So good night. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Bye.